Ufoma Apoki, if you can see me, make a comment. Can you see me? Ufoma, can you see me? I welcome you all to this evening's broadcast from Lagos. I'm your friend, Dr. Charles Apoki. I will turn the camera. Can you? Uh, this is the 24th floor of the hotel where I am resident. And you can see the cars. You can see the towers. You can see Bar Beach in the background and the ships. And so this is, that's, um, that area you are seeing is one of the most expensive properties in Nigeria as of today, the reclaimed land. So if you can see me, make a comment. I can see four people online. Tell me where you are viewing from six people Tell me where you are viewing from. I can see six people and that's very exciting. Let me know who is online. If you can see me, good morning, good afternoon, good evening. Who are those there? Wow, who for my viewing from Romania? That's powerful. <laughs> Sophie Comedy, good evening, sir. Watching from Worry, that's interesting. Please invite others to join. Blessed. Hello, sir. Thank you so much, Jean from Abuja. This is my first live broadcast, really, on YouTube. And I'm doing a test broadcast. So I'm so glad to see you. And uh, I want to share with you this evening the message, the talk I gave at the Witch Baker um, Hotel to senior members of staff, a pre-retirement lecture that I give to senior members of staff of an oil company. Oh, Mirella, my brilliant daughter-in-law, viewing from Romania with Luca, Luki, Luki. Thank you so much. Don't mind my dentition, I just ate peanuts. So I'm so glad to hear from you. Yes, Tayo, Sunday, Joseph, from Okpila. Oh, good. Oh, yeah, do Pataki. Thank you so much. Thank you so much. I'm waiting for us to gather, invite people. I'm waiting for us to gather so that I can deliver the lecture. I'm so glad to, to see you and to be able to do a live broadcast with you. God bless you all. Thank you for your encouragement. Uh, Chidi, oh, thank you so much. I, you don't know the value of these um, videos I do. I was invited by this company because of um, a video I did in the farm that Tunde Ednot shared. And if I tell you the kind of reception I've received, the kind of treatment I've received, is a is an answer to your prayers, and it's a sign that whatever we are doing here is uh, valued by people. I finished speaking today. Uh, okay, Winners Chapel. Yes, thank you so much. Um, I finished talking today. Two professors were there. One of the professors from the Kaduna Business School and uh, who is a, a director of um, a body in Nigeria immediately inducted me, absorbed me into a professional body. Thank you, Kwasi from Ghana. Thank you. Immediately inducted me into a professional body he said that um, I might be known globally, 
but I need to be more known in Nigeria and be more useful. And um, he inducted me immediately and then said that um, I should send my CV and that I was an icon and a gift to Nigeria and that I was among a few people in this country who not only lecture or teach, but do what I am teaching. So that's very interesting. I'm waiting until we are 20, then I will start. Thank you so much, uh, Mirella from Romania, Luca from Romania, Luca Apoki from Romania, Dr. Mirella Apoki from Romania, Ufoma Apoki from Romania, my brother from Winners Chapel Water Resources, my brother from Ghana. Thank you so much. I thinking of coming to Ghana. I would like to do conferences in different African countries. Because of our time, the topic of this evening is the aging process, the aging process, retirement, and remaining relevant. Good evening, Wale, and good evening, my brother. The aging, the reality of aging, the retirement, and remaining relevant. One person rightly said, somebody rightly said, that will get old too quickly and wise too late. The difference between 40 and 60 is not far. In fact, immediately you reach 60, you I mean 40, you discover that your life is running very fast. And so when you are 40, you should lay the foundation for what you will enjoy at 60. And at 50, you should be diversifying into what will keep you beyond 70 and what your children and great-grandchildren can live on. So aging is inevitable. It is a natural process. But as Professor Bishop John Bienos has said, getting old is not an illness. It only requires maintenance. The bad thing, as I said previously, is to get old and be broke. Don't get old and be broke. As you get older, nearly everything within you and around you will change. Your physical being will change. There are some things you should do very early in life. I stayed awake to, to, to write the message and to send it to the people who invited me. Just doing that affected my blood pressure because I stayed awake. When I was 40, 50, that would not have happened. So maximize the age bracket of 40 to 50. Do all you can do so that when you get to the older age bracket, you are under less pressure. So as you get older, you will discover that your appetite will change. Your values will change. When I was much younger, I liked cars. I liked cars. As at last year, we had 12 vehicles in my compound and in the school, including the one for my daughter and the ones I used to carry school children. I got tired and I told my wife to sell all of them because I was no longer interested in the stress of managing vehicles. So my desire for cars changed. I loved to travel. I, oh, I traveled to Australia, traveled to Ethiopia, traveled to Madagascar, stayed on the road for 17 hours from Antananarivo to Morandova. I went to Sierra Leone from Freetown to Makeni, 
Eventually, I left McKinney with uh, two other missionaries. We traveled by road to Bo. From Bo, we crossed the Mao River, traveled to Monrovia by road before we flew back. At this age, I find it difficult to go and queue in an embassy to apply for visa. I find it difficult to wait in an airport. I find it nauseating that when I want to enter another country, they will tell me um, um, nationals and non-nationals, and I will go and pass a longer queue. So international travels became boring to me, and they are not really my priority, if not for the fact that I want to share what is in me with as many nations as possible and to actualize my dream of raising one, Af one million African entrepreneurs and ministers that will minister with wealth, wisdom, and will minister with the power of God. Then when I was much younger, oh boy, I was always attracted to my wife because she was a beautiful woman and I knew her when she was 19 and I was 21. And I told her I will marry her. And so I was always attracted to her. And so we had our first baby in 86. We had our second baby in 87. We had our third baby in 88. Until one woman insulted me and said that, look at the man who is teaching us family planning. His wife gets pregnant every year. And all the children were sucking feeding bottle. So I stopped until 1996 when I had my last child. So today, in those days, oh, if I just see my wife, I'm excited. Today, two of us can be in the same bed, in the same room, nothing happens. So the desire for sex reduced because my testosterone level has also reduced. And then realized that I didn't need somebody's body to make me happy. It was at that age bracket that I decided at 56 to go and do a master's degree in public administration. One, to revalidate myself. Two, to create relevance for myself. And I made 10 A's, as I told you before, seven B's and one C. So I reconfirmed to myself that I was brilliant. And the research I did there on the sustainability of small and medium enterprises, with special reference to Akamu production or PAP production in the Korodafe Street, was a masterpiece. And it opened new doors for me. And that because I now have other things doing, Instead of thinking of sexual orgasm, I now have intellectual orgasm. It is not enough to have one degree and get frozen there. Oh, being a medical doctor could be fascinating, but doing a master's degree in the social sciences enabled me to be a better resource person to companies. So you can learn a new trade you can learn a new skill. You can go for more training. I know somebody who retired as a bank manager and he went to read law. It was that law that he read that brought more relevance to his life. One of the things you will notice is that as you get older, progress and time will separate you from some of your friends. Some of your friends that you have progressed more than will might not have time to associate with you. And some of the ones that have progressed more than you might avoid you. So make sure you keep pace with time and your own developmental rate so that you won't suffer middle age crisis. Middle age crisis you will find out that your children that you had when you were much younger, if you are 30 now, when you are 50, your children will be 20 years old. 
When you are 60, they will be 30 years old. They will all have gone away. Ironically, if you are a man, if you are a man, your children and your wife will be closer to themselves than you and your children. And because they don't need you again for school fees, for feeding, you discover that you become, you are important as a father, but you are not relevant. Relevance is importance for now. COVID-19 vaccine was important, but it was not relevant to a madman because mad people didn't have COVID. When people no longer need you to continue their journeys and to be comfortable and do well, you are no longer relevant. So I found out that with time, my wife did not need me much again. She was engrossed in her business and personal development. One of the things you will find as a man is that as you get older, your children might become more educated than you. Your children might become wealthier than you. Your children might become more exposed than you. And they will not be listening to your counsel as before. They will become independent and you will become, you will become irrelevant, though important as their father. Even your wife, when you are no longer they need them to take care of her bills, satisfy her sexually, produce children with her, you are no longer relevant. And that is where men get into trouble. They will now be looking for a younger girl to keep them happy. But all women are nearly the same, apart from a few exceptions. And if you don't take time, you will not bring crisis to your marriage. So because I don't do adultery, I started, thank you for watching from Mina. I started creating avenues for myself to become relevant to myself. I did a video on my bed in my one of my buildings near Worry, and people started calling whether I was sick. I was telling people that after all your struggles and all your movements around this world and all your pursuit of academics, pursuit of money, pursuit of several things, the greatest need in your life is peace. Peace with yourself, peace with your family, peace with God, and peace with others. Thank you so much, Kingsley from Germany. So what I decided was that I noticed that I started having more conflict. Esther Vrendo, I started getting more conflict with my wife because I was 62, she was 60. When I was 60, now that I'm 64, she's 62. You can't force ideas into her, into her any longer. She's an independent person. She does not fear you, there's nothing she has to lose. If you misbehave, she and the children will be on the same side. So I decided to create a new future for myself. That was when I left the schools. I left six flats that we owned and several businesses for her so that I could create a new future. You must take time Obama and Alex, how are you? You must take time to create a new future for yourself so that you do not start contending with your wife for finances, for relevance. When you start introducing yourself to your wife, don't you know I'm your husband? Know that you have lost relevance. Know that you are still important, but you have lost relevance. So... Roland, thank you so much. So I decided to create relevance for myself, first of all, by going to school again, where I scored very high grades. Number two, 
I decided to mentor young men and women around me so that even though my children are not around, I have spiritual children that surround me, intellectual children that surround me, that I'm able to interact with, influence their lives, contribute to their lives, and earn relevance in their lives. They value me as a father sometimes more than my own biological children. They do things for me more than my own biological children. That is the truth of the matter. So today, I am surrounded by a lot of young men and women who derive pleasure, wisdom, and knowledge from me, particularly those of you online. So I deliberately started this mentorship scheme online. And then I started a radio program that was reaching about an average of 11 million people in the Niger Delta. And I started another one at Worry Now at Mega on Mega FM on uh, Tuesday by 6 o'clock, 6.30 every Tuesday, and another one, 6.30 every Wednesday on Quest FM. And I started receiving phone calls from all over the Niger Delta, and people were, were blessed and are being blessed. My wife now realized that me with her at home, that she might not value as much that other people are valuing the things I share with them and share with her that she was not taking seriously. So I created relevance for myself by thinking outside myself. As you get older in life, if you keep thinking of only yourself, the food you will eat, the clothes you will wear, the cars you will drive, the political office you will occupy for self-aggrandizement, you will shrink to a non-entity and you will get frustrated and keep contesting elections without getting satisfied with love. You keep following women, keep buying cars, keep attending ceremonies, getting drunk, paying so much money to go and laugh in, uh, with a comedian without self-actualization. And then I started this deliberate program on, on social media. And you won't believe how much social media has contributed to my relevance and my thinking beyond my immediate self. All those who watch, listen to me, young men and women who make fun of me, they like uh, Landlord TV, there's another one, uh, Mr. Office, uh, some other two young children, um, twins that make mimicry of me. When you see one million people view whatever they are doing with, with what I have said before, it gives me joy that I'm making impact in the lives of people. So start to plan and think beyond your immediate self. Start to think beyond your immediate family and start to think globally. And so through these videos, I have had impact in the most distant parts of the world, in the most distant terrains and people I have never met before, people who are not direct members of my family. And so I am getting intellectual orgasm. I'm enjoying myself and I'm having the fun of my life. So I wake up every morning, not thinking of only myself. I wake up thinking of those who I owe a responsibility to influence and to mentor. And doing this has brought so much leverage to my life. If you see the way I was treated right from the airport in, in, the, in Lagos with armed police following me behind and uh, driven like a big man, brought to this wonderful hotel treated like uh, royalty, went to give a lecture today, 
people, much, people who are millionaires stood up and gave me a standing ovation. I don't think my wife, my children, my relatives, even my church members will do that. So sometimes when you think beyond yourself, you think beyond your nation, you think beyond your congregation, you will get more relevant in life than being stagnated with a few people in your family, in your denomination, and even in your nation. So my desire today is to be like a, a perfume in a container. I want to spray myself to as many people as possible to bring new fragrance to their lives. So when you retire, you will discover that your finances will reduce. And if your finances reduce and you're not able to meet up financially, it can affect your health. It can affect your psychology. It can affect your relationship with your wife. It can affect the, your relationship with your church people. When you have money, nearly every message your pastor will preach, your name will be involved. But when you retire and you are no longer contributing as much as before, you will discover that pastor is not mentioning your name as often as he used to mention your name. You will discover that some of your friends who we are relating with you because of what they can get from you will drift away. You will also discover that it is only those friends you made when you were much younger who have who were your friends without any reason that are most times very dedicated to you. So try as much as possible to set up businesses that you can fall back on. That was why I embarked on building those schools. Building those schools was something I plowed my energy to from the age of 40 till now that I'm 24. And so even though I don't go to work, my family has income on a regular basis to take care of their needs. And at the same time, through the school, I am influencing the next generation of Nigerians in my locality and beyond. And so I will remain relevant even after I have left this world because those children I have trained, they will not forget my name. So you can remain relevant by setting up institutions and businesses that will outlive you. You drink Lipton tea, Lipton was the name of somebody. You use Maggie cubes. Maggie was the name of somebody in Holland. It's the name of somebody. Most of the products you use are names of somebody. Cadbury was the name of a man. And so what will your generation remember you for? What is it that you will set up now that can sustain you into old age and beyond and can still outlive you. So I set up those schools, but at a point I had to leave them for my wife and my daughter to run because they have different ideas and I have different ideas and I don't want conflict between us. Any role they call me to play, I play and I leave the system for them. You cannot suppress a woman. One of the causes of crisis between my wife and I when I was younger was that my wife has so much energy, so much idea, so much ability, and I was trying to cage her. And you can't cage a woman because she will destroy you if she wants to. And so when I allowed her to pursue her passion of wanting to be a teacher, even though I convinced her to be a nurse then, she now had an avenue to release her energies. And by doing that, she has maximized her life and given me space for me to maximize my life. One of the mistakes my father did before he retired and before he died was that he did not buy real estate. And so very early in life, 
I bought real estate. And I have been buying and selling and reselling and reinvesting in real estate. And that has provided another source of income and relevance for me. I have made more money during this Buhari regime than ever before because I have sold a lot of real estate. I bought and I sold. So what are you investing in? Are you investing in real estate or are you, or are you investing in cars that will expire? Cars will expire and become liabilities. No, I want to drive good cars, but I don't want a great percentage of my income that I could have invested in real estate to give me money to buy the latest model of cars in, fu in future and use it to buy a car that will be less than the cost of land in the future. So think futuristically, think intentionally, invest in real estate. So I invested in real estate. And one of the real estates I invested in was the land at Efunoto where I am currently farming and where I am building Petra Institute. We laid the foundation two years back. By October, November, we are going to start work again. And I'm going to need your help. I'm going to appeal to you who are my partners, who have benefited from my mentorship to contribute towards building that school and making it where people can come and acquire skills and also learn. We're going to have a business school there where people can come and acquire skills and acquire knowledge on entrepreneurship and business. So I invested in real estate. I invested in people, and then I invested in philanthropy. You know, during the flood disaster that affected Nigeria, I appealed for AIDS on radio and on social media. And you people donated a lot of materials that I took to Ozoro Ole, Every knee, a woo, a quagbe, a boy day, a queen more, a godor, a coloba, several places. Some of them I went twice. If you mention my name in those communities, you will find out that I have contributed to their lives and I'm relevant to their lives. So think beyond yourself, build a network that you can call on to make you function beyond yourself and your immediate family. And my liaison, my association with Salimo Wits Foundation has brought a lot of leverage to my philanthropic work. And so currently, if I think of only my children and my grandchildren and think of only myself and my wife, I will be unfulfilled. Recently, I gave a scholarship to a young girl in the village. And I want to start the village girl, village girl scholarship scheme. I want to educate and give scholarship to village girls. They must be village girls from JSS1 to SS3. I will pay for them. By September, I am starting with 10 girls in the village, my mother's village. I will do an, ent an interview for them. My daughter will conduct that exam. The first 10 girls will get the scholarship. The condition is that you must not fail and you must not get pregnant. Because I'm seeing them with bomb shots. I'm seeing them with, uh, uh, with boys all over the place. The tendency is that they will get pregnant without getting married and it will recycle poverty because research has shown that when a young girl gets pregnant and does not complete school, the likelihood of her daughter not completing school increases 75%. And so to stop and mitigate poverty, I'm going to start this scheme. And I just, as I was sharing with one woman today, she said she wants to be part of that scheme. And so you now find out that 
I am going to live beyond myself because each girl I train will become a mother of at least four children and I will never leave her testimony. So what are you thinking about life? And so you must start thinking beyond yourself and start thinking like the Sabanchi man. Sabanchi Foundation in Turkey pays 5% of the annual tax of Turkey with his family. He gives scholarship to 27,000 people in their universities. And he said, I must give back to a nation who has given so much to me. I am who I am today in this beautiful tower, this beautiful environment, treated like royalty, speaking to the elite. This oil company that I spoke to, they are totally different from the one I spoke to that were making noise, who had the spirit of poverty that I shared with you. They were very, very calm and they were top management staff, directors. And so you see the difference between the poverty spirit and the wealth spirit. And so Sabanchi Foundation gives scholarship to 27,000 people. I want you to be like Fatima, who inherited some money from the father and built al Quarin University in Fez in Morocco. It is the oldest continuous degree awarding university in the world. It is still there. I think it was established in 899 AD, many years back. So what are you going to leave behind? Is it, is it just children, clothes, food? At a stage, you can't even chew. At a stage, you can't eat. You eat rubbish, vegetables. At a stage, you start running in the stadium when no man pursues you in the name of not wanting to die. So derive relevance by reaching out to people. And I'll tell you something. I found out that my social media life has enhanced me more because it has linked me with people I never knew. People I've never seen. I've never met Kanayo or Kanayo. I've never met Tunde Ednot that shared this video on, um, shared my video on Instagram through where, from Instagram, they knew me and invited me to come and give this lecture. So what relevance are you going to contribute? Today, in our society, the emphasis is very wrong particularly among you who are women. The emphasis on fashion, the emphasis on uh, sex, the emphasis on nudity, the emphasis on uh, marriage alone. We don't know Fatima's husband. We don't know Fatima's children, but Fatima built an institution. So as you get older, even as you are younger, start thinking about what you can do to enhance society, that society will not forget you. Remember, Mary Slessor came as a young man, as a young woman. Mary Slessor came to Calabar as a young woman. Her name cannot be erased. Remember, Pa Elton came to Elisha. Through Pa Elton, people like Archbishop Benson Idaosa, John Marshall Oposio, and all so many prominent ministers, including Archbishop Benson Idaosa, became uh, better mentored and exposed to ministry. And today the daughter is still in Elisha. She refused to, con to continue with her British citizenship and took up Nigerian citizenship just for the sake of the gospel. So you can't mention ministry in Nigeria without mentioning Pa Elton. What are you living for? As you get older, Start thinking about posterity. It is true that we brought nothing to this world. It is true that we will take nothing from this world, but we can leave something behind. The future starts now. Start thinking of something you can start small. I started Petra Christian Academy with five students, including my last born with my wife. My children were teachers, 
I was school driver, I cleaned toilets. But today, it has grown. And we have adopted the Apoki formula of business where we, we, we attract money, we trap money, then we recycle money within our system before we allow it to go away. It's a sustainable way of doing business. And it has helped us and you can adopt it. So the reason the professor said he was giving me that certificate and acknowledging my contribution to humanity was that I am among the few people who teach and practice what I teach. And so you too can practice this system, the Apoki family system of business. Let money, attract money, retain money, recycle money before you return money to the society. And then you will build an enduring, an enduring legacy. You can start small and gradually grow big. We started our publishing company very small. Today is a multimillionaire business. So don't be afraid to start small. It's only what you start that grows. It's only what you start that you finish. The best way to start is to start. I am quoting Mrs. Felicia Apoki. So leave a family that plan intentionally. Have a family that can build on your legacy as you get older. When you think beyond yourself and your children think beyond themselves, your wife thinks beyond herself and thinks about the kind of legacy you will leave behind, you now find out that the children of the elite do not remain overseas. They come home to build on their father's legacies because sometimes overseas is not the best place to age. It's very painful and very difficult to age in a cold climate in a strange land with children who might carry you into a motherless, uh, uh, an old people's home. When your father and your mother have built a legacy here that you can build on, a time comes when you need to come back home and take over whatever your father and your mother used to send you overseas and develop it and build on it. You can have dual citizenship, but you cannot allow your roots here in Nigeria to wither. This is one of the best countries to be born. Even though we have bad leadership here, these same people don't, stay, don't allow their children to run away from this country perpetually. They always come back to contest elections. They always come back to run their father's businesses. It is the spirit of poverty to run away from your fatherland and go to a nation that others have built. A time comes in another man's nation, you are not relevant, no matter what you have become. So try and trace yourself to your country. What we are saying is that this country is not the best. There has been insecurity. There are wicked people but you can come here with discretion. Don't advertise yourself, come without publicity, stay for a while, go. Make sure you monitor your father's, uh, your, your father's businesses, your family legacy with a phone. There's a man who has a polytechnic and a university in Nigeria. He monitors them with his phone overseas. He comes and goes. So build a legacy that your children can build on. Children, Take over your father's legacy, build on it. Because as you get older, you will become irrelevant in a company once they retire you. Finally, I learned this from one Mr. Obi, who is from India Ojuku, a relative of Chief Chukwemeka Odumegu Ojuku, and a relative of Barrister Azuka Obi of blessed memory, the men's director of Assemblies of God Church, at one time that I traveled extensively with. As you get older, as you build houses, don't build stupidly large houses, build functional houses. And in your house, 
build businesses within. I'll give you an example. We have poultry in my compound, even though we didn't stock beds for some reason now. We have poultry in my compound. We have plantain in my compound. All the plantain chips they eat in our school are from my plantain. We have coconut in my compound. We produce coconut chips from uh, coconut candy from them. And so I sell plantain suckers from my compound. You can establish that uh, Mr. Obi had a polythene factory in his compound, had a water factory there. It is the same generator that powers his house, that powers the factory. So he has regular electricity supply. He does not trek out to work or drive out to work. He works within his compound. And I suspect maybe he donated, uh, I don't know his relationship with the Assemblies of God Church near him that shares fence with him. So he just leaves his house, goes to his church. Build an economy around yourself in your old age so that you do not need to drive long distances to go to work, long distances to go to church. My church is in my school compound. It's a trackable distance from my home. So build businesses around yourself in your home that you can easily monitor. And some of those workers will help to take care of you, take care of your needs as you get older, if your children decide to stay overseas. That is the lecture on aging, the lecture on aging, retirement, and becoming and remaining relevant. Note this, as you get older, your maintenance cost will increase. When I came to Ugeli, I was not wearing these glasses. When I came to Ugeli, I was very strong. But as I'm getting older, I don't have the kind of energy that I had before. My diet needs to change. The kind of tea I drink is more expensive. The kind of meals I eat, I need to be selective. I need to check myself. Today, I went to do a test to check myself, and it was 20,000 Naira. It was my friend that paid, that came to visit me. 20,000 Naira, if you don't have anything to fall back on, if you have prostatic enlargement, the surgery is at least 1.5 million. If you have a fracture of the, the neck of your femur and you need a hip replacement, each of them is a minimum of 1.5 million. If you need a knee surgery, you might spend 1.5 million. To control blood pressure costs a lot of money. To control diabetes costs a lot of money. The kind of meals you need to eat, the kind of medications you need to take, to check your blood, your sugar level on a daily basis with the strips or glucometer, it costs money. Medical checkups take money. So if you don't have money, a business that generates money for you in old age, you might suffer. Obasanjo had been diabetic for 40 years, but is able to eat the right meals, take the right treatment. I know somebody who has been diabetic since 1979. He's still alive and well. One of the days I got to his house, they were doing pedicure for him. They put his feet inside hot water with soap and a young beautiful girl was scraping the dead skin away. So you must, you must save for old age. Old age, as I said in the beginning, according to Bishop Bienose, is not an illness. It requires maintenance. Old age is not a time for frustration. Neither is, a time, is it a time for contention. The children you have labored to train, they might not send you money. They might not send you money. I spent a lot of money training children. I don't think they've sent me money in recent times. It's other people's children that I mentor that send me money, buy me clothes, buy things for me. Even those ones I trained my own children, they say daddy has money. Daddy is a rich man. And they have an entitlement mentality 
that because they are my children, they have spiritual cover. While the children of other people tap into the anointing by relating with me and sowing seeds into my life, it is very important because the spirit of a man is the candle of the light of the Lord. So why did Isaac decide to eat pepper, pepper soup and bush meat before praying for his children? Because when his spirit is happy and is elevated, he prophesies from the bottom of his belly and it comes to pass. So try as much as possible to have reserves. Try as much as possible to raise men, young men and women so that as you get older, you will become relevant. You will remain prosperous and you will not be a beggar. I hope this message has blessed you. If it has blessed you, please share to as many people as possible. Share it on WhatsApp, share it on Facebook, share it on YouTube, share it in as many channels as possible. And remember to subscribe to our YouTube channel and go to Dr. Charles Apoki and go to our online bookshop, petrapublications.com to get the materials. You are so fortunate because the company staff were, com were complaining and blaming themselves that why did they not register, I mean, record the message? This was the message I shared with them. Well, apart from a little jokes here and there that some of you have heard me say before, this was the substance of the message. Thank you so much for listening. I admire you and I love you so much. And I felt I should share this with you. God bless you. Bless you. You will get old. You will not be broke. You will get old. You will be strong. You will get old. You will be surrounded by men and women who are willing to bless you and be of relevance to you. As you get older, you will be like wine. You will be sweeter. As you get older, people will pay your bills because you have paid your dues. I can't afford the luxuries I am enjoying here. God bless you. God bless you. Bless you. Remember, I love you all from the bottom of my heart. That's why I do what I do. Don't mind my excesses. Don't mind my ability. But I remain my, 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 don't mind my abnormality. I remain your friend and you are dear to me, Dr. Charles uh, Pokey. God bless you and God bless you. I want to thank somebody who gifted money while watching one of the broadcasts from a country. I can't remember his name now, but God will surprise you, bless you. You too can gift us as you are watching this broadcast. God bless you.